Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. morning welcome to the 27th lecture on economics management and entrepreneurship in the last 26 lectures we had discussed about various topics on microeconomics engineering economics costing and accounting in the last few lectures we talked about engineering economics in great detail using time value of money and in the last two lectures we discussed on accounting for depreciation. As we were doing earlier we shall take up a few examples to complete our discussion on various topics on economics. After this lecture, we shall be discussing on various topics on management and how they are applied to the particular profession of entrepreneurship. So, today we shall revise our memory and try to solve some exercises. First, we take a problem on budgeting that we had done some 5 or 6 lectures ago. This is a very simple problem. Ashok Furniture Mart plans inventory levels at the end of each month and for 2 months the desired inventory level are given. For the month of May, it is 250,000 rupees and for June, it is 220,000 rupees. Sales for June are given as 440,000 rupees. Cost of goods sold is usually 80 percent of the sales. Purchases in April and May were 250,000 rupees and 180,000 rupees. A purchase is made at cash 10 percent the same month, 80 percent after one month and 10 percent after two months. The problem is to prepare the budget schedules for June for purchase and for disbursements for purchases. Now, these are desired inventory levels for May and June. June sales data are given, cost of goods sold given, purchases in April and May are given not for June and this statement says that when a purchase is made 10 percent of the amount is given in cash and 90 percent given later 80 percent after one month 10 percent after two months. So, we are required to find out for June how much to purchase and actual cash disbursements for purchases. So, we prepare first of all the budget for purchase and the budget for cash disbursement. Now, given our April and May figures of purchases, also given the sales data for June and we know 80 percent of sales is cost of goods sold. 
therefore, 80 percent of 440,000 comes to 352,000. The desired end inventory are given here. Now, from this we can find out the amount to be purchased in June. How? Because whatever we are left with at the end of May plus the amount to be purchased in June minus the June end inventory. So, 250,000 is the amount that we are left with at the end of May plus whatever we purchase in June from there we will sell 352,000 this is the cost of goods sold the actual inventory will be depleted by this amount although we are selling at a higher price and thereby gaining some profit the cost of goods sold is 352,000. So, after we subtract this we should be left with 220,000 because that is desired at the end of June we should have this. By solving this we get purchase in June should be equal to 322,000 rupees. So, this is how the June purchases is budgeted for and of course, similarly one can if the values are given for July August we can also find out the purchases to be made for the months of July and August. Now, the disbursement it says that whenever we make a purchase 10 percent of that we pay in cash. So, this month it is 322,000 amount purchased cash purchase is just about 10 percent which is 32,200 rupees remaining is credit, but the purchases made one month ago 80 percent of that amount has to be paid now. So, purchase one month ago was 180,000 rupees 80 percent of that comes to 144,000 rupees and purchase made two years ago 10 percent of that has to be paid now. So, 25,000 rupees is to be paid now because in April it was 250,000 rupees. If we add them up we get the amount cash that has to be cash disbursement to be made in the month of June. So, this is the solution for exercise the last exercise. Okay. So, now for this problem now we have found out the amount to be purchased this is the budgeted purchase and this is the budgeted cash outflow on account of purchases. Now, we take another problem another exercise your farm is currently paying rupees 250 a month to a commercial garbage collection agency to haul waste paper to the city dump. So, basically waste papers are dumped into the into a particular place and an agency has been deployed to carry the waste paper to that place by paying rupees 250 a month. Now, there is an alternative the paper could be sold as waste paper if it were bailed and strapped if it is properly bailed and strapped then they can be sold at a price. A paper baler is available at the following with the following values if you buy a paper baler the price is rupees 6500 to operate that baler you need some labor and that cost is rupees 3500 a year 
you have to also need a strapping material and your estimate is that it is rupees 300 per year. A baler if purchased will have a life of useful life of about 30 years and it can be sold at a value of salvage value of rupees 500 and the minimum attractive rate of return as 10 percent per year can be taken. It is estimated that in a year 500 such bells can be prepared that is your waste paper volume is such that you can make 500 bells. What would be what would the selling price to a waste paper dealer have to be to make this project acceptable. So, because you have to sell this bell at a price p what should be that price p b so that this alternative is economically viable. Now, so we have two alternatives in the first alternative we pay an amount of rupees 250 to the collection agency and the second alternative is that we can buy a machine use a labor. So, there is a labor cost there is a procurement cost there is a material cost, but we can sell the bell the estimated number of bells is known as 500. So, this is what we are trying to write down here alternative 1 commercial garbage agency collects the wastes payment we make is 250 rupees per month and 12 months a year that comes to rupees 3000 per year. The second alternative has got these values purchase price is 6500 and annual expenses is labor plus material labor per year is 3500 material is 300 total 3800 rupees per year. Annual revenue suppose that every bell the price is priced at rupees p 500 bells per year into p rupees per bell is 500 p rupees per year. Now, we show this in the form of a figure the second alternative this is a cash outflow 6500 and the annual expenses for 30 years at the rate of 3800 this one 3800. The revenues are 500 into p, p is the unit price of the bell 500 bells per year and then finally, the salvage value of 500 rupees at which the baler can be sold out. So, this is the cash flow diagram. So, what we do 500 p is the annuity. So, we find out the present worth of this equal payment series. So, 500 p multiplied by p given a equal payment series present worth factor 10 percent MARR 30 years plus the salvage value 500 you say single payment find out its present worth. So, single payment present worth factor 10 percent 30 years and now we subtract from there 6500 does the initial 
investment and also subtract the present worth of all the expenses, annual expenses. So, this is the equal payment series present worth factor multiplied by 3800. So, we show this as 3800 into the equal payment series present worth factor. This amount should be greater than or equal to the, the amount that alternative 1 asks for. This amount is 300, 3000 rupees per year. So, 3000 rupees per year is the cost here and this amount this is in fact, uh, uh, if we write this as uh, this is a cost and this cost should be low. Uh, in fact, uh, we should write it in a different way, we should write that that uh, the, uh, the cost should be less because this is a cost to us and if uh, this is the the this could be positive or this may not be positive therefore we shouldn't write this as greater than or equal to we should write this should be compared with this should be compared with 3000 So, this value should be compared with 3000. Now, from the interest table for 10 percent, we see that P of A, there is a mistake here. P given A is 9.427 and P given F is 0.0573 for the from 10 percent interest table we find out the equal payment series present worth factor and single payment present worth factor and use these values here and then we compare this value with 3000 and we see that if the selling price is greater than rupees 9.8 then our then this will be better it will give us uh, profit over or it will be more economically viable compared to the alternative one. Now, we take up yet another problem <coughs> this is a problem of a construction company which is going to purchase several light duty material handling equipment. Its MARR before taxes is 20 percent <coughs> and it is considering equipment of two makes, make A and make B and the following relevant data have been obtained. Make A gives an investment or requires an investment of rupees 100,000, make B 150,000. The salvage value is 20,000 for make A, 30,000 for make B, and annual out of pocket expenses are 40,000 and 30,000 respectively but their useful lives are different 3 and 5. What type of equipment should be purchased? Now, this is a clear case of comparison between alternatives. Here one thing to notice is that the useful lives are different. So, here we have two choices 
the first choice is the equivalent annual cost method and the second choice is applying present worth cost comparison method, but there you have to make certain assumption. If you recall the assumption is one of repeatability or coterminous assumptions. First we study the equivalent annual cost comparison method. In the equivalent annual cost comparison method these are the two cash flow diagrams for make A and for make B. For make A the initial investment is 100,000 salvage value is 20,000. So, he gets back it is a positive cash flow this is negative cash flow and annual expenses are 20,000 rupees per year. For make B initial investment 150,000, 5 years and not 3 years, salvage value 30,000, annual expenses 30,000. So, what we do here is to find out the equivalent annual cost. That means, we first find out the equivalent of equivalence of this to A equivalence of this as A or annuity and then also take this into consideration. So, for this we find out the what is this factor called? This is called capital recovery factor. We have invested this amount. What is the capital recovery factor? A given P. 0. Point, this is taken as 20 percent and 3 years and then plus 20,000 this one minus we find out the equivalent annuity this is the sinking fund factor 20,000 multiplied by a given f sinking fund factor for 3 years. So, this quantity from the interest table I got this value as 0.4747 and of this value as 0.2747 and then EAC equivalent annual cost for make A is obtained as 61,876 rupees. Then I also do the similar calculations for make B 150,000 into the capital recovery factor plus 30,000 minus 30,000 into sinking fund factor. But in this case, the number of years is not 3 but 5. So, I look at the 20 percent table, but n was 5, the values obtained were 0 0.3344 and 0 0.1344. Hence, the equivalent annual cost will be equal to this plus this minus this, which comes to 76,000. 128 rupees and this quantity is lower than this. This is a cost therefore, make A alternative is less costly compared to make B alternative. Now, this is how equivalent annual cost comparison method is applied. Now, if we apply the present worth cost comparison method, then as I said there are two ways one is assumption of repeatability. Repeatability means after the project is completed it will be repeated again. 
So, the first project which is of 3 year duration we shall assume that it will be repeated 5 times. So, that the total number of years we have is 3 into 5 which is 15 years and the second project that is second alternative will be repeated 3 times it has got a life of 5 years when repeated 3 times it will be 15 years and therefore, they will have the same number of years. So, which means that the first one suppose this is 3 1 2 3 then this will be continued this project will continue 2 times this is 3 times this is 4, four times this is 5 times. So, this project whatever the nature of the this is the first time then it will be once again this will continue for the second time and once again this will be continued for the third time fourth time and lastly fifth time. <coughs> this is for make A, make B this is the fifth time 5 years Fifteen year, 10 years and then lastly 15 years. So, similarly we have it will be repeated again it will be repeated for the third time also. So, that the number of years is the same. So, this is how present worth method can be applied by assuming a repeatable or repeatability making repeatability assumption. The other way is this that suppose the first one whatever the amount charged uh, comes here as a final sum this will be assumed to be reinvested for the next 2 years. So, this is make 1 and this is make, make A and this is make B. So, here we make coterminous assumption meaning we say that whatever amount is found out here at the end of the third year will be reinvested. So, that we find out its equivalence at the end of the fifth year and this final sum will be compared with the total amount that uh, is coming here as equivalent at the end of the fifth year. So, if we have to use the present worth cost comparison method there are two ways of doing it one make a repeatability assumption. So, that the number of years uh, is equal and that can be found out by taking LCM of the number of years of the two projects and then apply present worth. Else what you do we assume that after the end of the smaller project smaller duration project that amount will be reinvested for 
some more years. So, that the number of years for both the alternatives is the same and then find out the present worth. So, these are the two approaches, but however, we can always use the equivalent annual cost comparison method. Next, we take up another problem. Gopal wants to start a small business by investing rupees 500,000. He estimates that the revenues and expenses in the 10 years of the business will be rupees 1 million and 400,000 respectively. After 10 years, he hopes to wind up the business and is likely to get back rupees 200,000 by selling all the assets of the business. Use the internal rate of return and the external rate of return methods to find the economic feasibility of the proposal. Use MARR as equal to 18 percent. So, what is it saying? It is saying that it is investing an amount of rupees 500,000 and that the business will last for 10 years and the revenues and expenses are given every year and he is likely to get back rupees 200,000 when he winds up his business after 10 years. So, this is the situation cash flow diagram initial investment 500,000 every year the revenues are 1 million, but the expenses are 400,000 and he gets back 200,000 at the end of 10 years. So, these are revenues these are expenses, this is the initial investment. Now, if we apply the internal rate of return method, it says that the R, that rate of return at which the present worth of all cash flows equals 0 is the value of IRR. This being an outflow, we write here as minus 500,000. And these are revenues, inflows, so plus. But this is minus, therefore, this is minus. So, 1 million minus 400,000. This find out its present worth P at a value r, we do not know the value of r, we have to determine the value of r, but we know the number of years 10 and then plus this is gas inflow plus 200,000 single payment present worth factor, this is equal payment series present worth factor. This quantity should be equal to 0. So, here one, or two, one has to use a trial and error method. If you have the interest tables for different values of r, you see where it is close to 0. Somewhere it will be negative, somewhere it will be positive. So, those two interest rates you take interpolate and find out the value of r. If that r is higher than MARR, accept the project. If it is lower than MARR, do not take up that project and MARR value is given as equal to 18 percent. Now, what is external rate of return method? Here what we do? All expenses are first of all discounted to the present. All revenues are compounded at the end of the 
final month that is what is done here 500,000 plus all the expenses. So, in this case 400,000 are discounted to the present at MARR 18 percent and they are now invested at an external rate of return R which we do not know that is ERR. So, after this is discounted to the present equal payment series present worth factor this you can get from the table 18 percent table multiply that with 4000 400000 add to that 500000 and this amount suppose it is reinvested externally at a rate r that should be equal to the compounded amount here so the compounded amount factor is multiplied with this value and that's equal to 100000 multiplied by equal payment series compound amount factor plus the 200,000 that we are having here. So, here everything is known there is no question of trial and error. If you have the values of this P by A and F by A you can multiply and you can directly find out the value of R. Now, we take yet another problem. This problem is the problem of a bond, a 10 year bond of rupees 1 million is issued in 10,000 units. If you recall a company can get money to invest in two forms basically. One to get in the form of by selling shares that means, uh, the real owners of the company either common stocks or preference stocks. Another way is to get loan long term loan which are called bonds or debentures and this is that particular problem that we are taking. A 10 year bond of rupees 1 million is issued in 10,000 units paying 10 percent nominal interest in semi annual payments. It means that every bondholder will get 10 percent interest, but semi annually that means, twice a year. And how does this company a bond the interest is paid every half year, but the bond amount the actual face value will be paid at the end of 10 years that is the meaning of bonds. Now, how does the company make this payment? The company actually creates a sinking fund, so that at the end of 10 years it has the ability to make that payment. It interest payments are less, but this 1 million rupees loan that the company has taken from its uh, bondholders that may be difficult to pay at the end of 10 years unless it has created a fund and that fund is called the sinking fund. And suppose that sinking fund is created which earns 8 percent compounded semi annually to pay back the dues. Then what is the payment to the sinking fund? By how much? the company should pay to the sinking fund that earns 8 percent interest. So, that it pays back the interest on the bonds semi annually and also pays back the principal at the end of 10 years. This is the 
question. Now there are two cash flows involved here. One is payment to the bondholders, the other is payment to the sinking fund. Payment is made every year, every in fact every half a year, this 20 is not year, it is the time is the periods, 10 years is equivalent to 20 interest periods because interest is paid every half a year. So, 20 is the interest periods, every interest period interest is paid how much? Interest is paid 10 percent interest is paid. Now, 10 percent interest half a year is 5 percent. So, 5 percent of 1 million comes to 50,000 rupees. So, it is 50,000 rupees per half year or 50,000 rupees per interest period is the same thing and there are 20 interest periods and at the end the face value of the bond has to be paid back which is 1 million rupees. So, the cash flow to the bondholders is this. Now, when we consider the sinking fund to be, to be able to make this payment, the company has to create a fund and that is the sinking fund by giving certain amount and we are required to find out this amount. Okay. Now, to solve this problem we have first of all the number of interest periods 2 in a year 10 years therefore, 20 interest periods. Now, for the sinking fund the only 8 percent interest is given. So, per period it is 4 percent. The final sum of the sinking fund has to be 1 million rupees. So, we have to use the sinking fund factor 20 interest periods and in every interest period 4 percent interest. So, the single payment sinking fund factor at a 4 percent interest and 20 interest period is obtained as 0 double 3 point 0 double 3 5 8 multiply that with the final sum that will give the annuity which is 33,580 rupees. So, this is the amount to be paid to the sinking fund in every period for 20 years at a 8 percent interest rate to be able to get 1 million rupees at the end of 10 years. Now, the semi annual interest paid to the bondholder is bondholder is paid at a rate of 10 percent per year. So, for half the year it is 5 percent, 5 percent of 1 million rupees is 50,000 rupees. So, this is the semi annual interest paid to the bondholder and therefore, the total payment is both to the sinking fund and to the bondholder every period. To the sinking fund the amount is 33,580 rupees and to the bondholder it is 50,000. Therefore, the company pays a total of 83,580 rupees per period and in 10 years that is in 20 periods the total amount the company pays arithmetic sum is 1 million 671,600 rupees. So, this is 
a, an exercise and the last exercise we take is this. A company purchased a machine for rupees 150,000. It paid shipping costs of rupees 10,000 and non recurring installation costs amounting to rupees 12,000. At the end of 3 years, the company had no further use for the machine. So, it spent rupees 5000 for having the machine dismantled, for having the machine dismantled and was able to sell the machine for rupees 15000. Use various methods to compute depreciation and the book values. Already in the last uh, class uh, last lecture we had discussed this. The machine was purchased for rupees 150,000, but there are initial uh, costs such as shipping cost and non recurring installation cost. Therefore, we will have to add these costs to the purchase price to find out our adjusted cost basis that is what we have done. The adjusted cost basis is the price plus the shipping cost and the installation cost that comes to 172,000 rupees. The recovery period is 3 years and the company spends spent 5,000 rupees and sells it at 15,000 rupees at the end of 3 years. Therefore, the net salvage value will be 15 minus 5 that is 10 that is what we have written here. Now, the straight line method of depreciation calculations are very simple 172 minus 10 that is 162 divided by 3 that comes to 54,000 rupees per year and book values are at the end of the first year 172 minus 54 and minus 54 and minus 54. So, book values are 118664 and 10,000 rupees respectively. Now, use some of the years digits that is simple 3 years remaining and 1 plus 2 plus 3. So, 3 by 6 half of this is 81,000. This is 2 by 3, 54,000 and this is 27,000, 1 by 3. Book values are 172 minus this 91,000 minus this 37,000 minus this 10,000. So, that is the sum of the years digits method. Now, for the double declining balance method, first of all it is 3 years. So, 2 by n 2 by 3 f is equal to 66.7 percent. So, what we have to do for every year we calculate double declining balance method and straight line depreciations. Double declining balance method 172 minus 10 into 2 by 3 which comes to 108000. Now, depreciation in the first year according to straight line is 54 already we have seen or you can first calculate 172 minus 10 by 3 that comes to 54. So, 54 is lower than this calculated by DDV. So, the higher of the two we take that is why it is selected. So, what is the book value after the first year? It is 172 minus 108 it is 64,000 rupees. On this basis we calculate year 2's depreciation 
in the second year it is 64 minus 10 the salvage value into 2 by 3 that is the fraction the amount comes to 36,000 rupees and according to straight line method it is 64 minus 10 divided by 2 years remaining that is 27. 27 is less than 36 therefore, select 36 therefore, the book value comes down from 64 to 28000 after subtracting 36000. Finally, we come to year 3 it is 28000 minus 10000 which is 18000 into 2 third 2 third is fraction that is equal to 12000 and by straight line it is 18000 higher is 18000 so select that so we have switched over to straight line only in the last year to be able to get the salvage value of 10000 at the end so this is how we have used the straight line method the sum of the years digits method and the declining balance method with switch over to straight line method so in our in these exercises that we covered today we have seen problems on budgeting on simple interest rate calculations or considering time value of money we compared alternatives by present worth method by equivalent annual cost comparison method by internal rate of return method and by external rate of return method then we also used an example to show how different methods of depreciation accounting can be used on a particular problem. So, with this we end our series of lectures on economics as relevant to the profession of entrepreneurship. From the next lecture onwards we shall be discussing on the principles of management that are pertinent to entrepreneurship. Thank you very much.